report now from the Weather Center. Very strong storms moving into the New York metropolitan area. These storms produced heavy rain, up to five inches, some spots in southeastern New York State. Now raining hard in Manhattan, so it looks like rain tonight. And more on the way, this system is going to be with us for a while. Looks like thunder and lightning tonight, some of it very, very intense. If you're out of Montauk Point, you're in the Hamptons, expect the thunderstorm later. If you're in uh, New Jersey, you're just about to move to the area now and should be ending shortly. We have reports of very strong winds and storm, frequent lightning, very bright and... And what's the latest weather from the satellite? Well, according to New York Center, we've got storms 20 miles out during the climb. The crossing reads clear. Daughter, the blushing bride. I wish I could be with you to watch you to exchange your gifts. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll wrap them again before we come home and reopen them in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget, the office still stands oh. when you get back here. Yes, absolutely. Um, Dad, Thank this you is much. our honeymoon. Okay. okay. You take good care of our little girl. Oh, don't worry, I will. The white tail is for immediate loading and unloading only. Hi. I already picked up our boarding passes. Where's the cart? Oh, they're picking us up inside. Well, then next time, don't forget to call public relations at the airport and have the cart pick me up at the curve. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Walker. Um, you 2.30 with LaRue has been changed to Thursday, but your agent said that you don't have to take the meeting unless his script really knocks your socks off. Good. Then you read it. Okay, I'll read it on the plane. I'll let you know if you like it or not. I'm a big girl now. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. It's cool. I wish Mom were here, though. I miss her. <sighs> yeah, me too. Look, Graham will be at the gate to meet you. Okay, and you be sure to phone me the minute you arrive. Yeah, give your old man a hug. Mm. I'll miss you, Dad. Come on, you. Uh, we're gonna have to charge you for those three extra suitcases. I understand. Okay, Mr. Brett Young, one way to London. You have an aisle seat, first row, business class. Have a pleasant flight. Thank you. electrical storms how does your family feel about flying in similar weather tonight well i saw a tv report and, oh and, and my yes, god it's I ethan walker and it's raised a lot of questions for me why are we talking about that we can't talk will you send an autograph sure well, what's your name vanessa what a surprise we're here with ethan walker star of this summer's blockbuster hit firepower where are you headed to london business or pleasure Oh, definitely business, not pleasure. Thank you. We're here tonight at the airport talking to passengers about flying in bad weather. Do you feel safe? Well, Samantha, you might remember. Who we'll played the pilot in Flight of the Eagle? Personally, I believe you're safer boarding an airplane than you are going across town in Manhattan. Special meals coach, to do Andre's beef and chicken, even a split, and 293 breakfast, 60 combos. Hey, Lord. Hi there. How's that little squirt of yours like in first grade? He's learned a new word. What's that? Homework. <laughs> Hey, what's this I hear about you leaving this run? Oh, I don't know, you know. I'm just sort of considering my options, that's all. 
thought you loved all this. You know, sometimes you get a little burned out, you know. Well, we're gonna miss you. Gordon of the New York Cobras. Five years running. 23 points and 12 assists per game. I'm impressed, little lady. You really know your game. You play? Yeah. I scored 20 points for my team once. That's real good. You know, I went to the game where you beat Seattle at the buzzer. I don't care what they say about you not being a team player. Still the best guard in the NBA. Go ahead, little girl. You tell them. Oh my gosh, wait till Mark and Willie hear who I rode on the plane with. Hey guys. Appreciate this, Captain. Glad to have you. Any friend of Doc's. I, I got here too late to file a flight ops, but I'll hand it in at the other end. Down to 4,500, I have this report now from the Weather Center. Very strong storms moving into the New York metropolitan area. These storms produced heavy rain at the five inches. Looks like thunder and lightning tonight. Some of it very, very intense. May I hand your coat, sir? Thank you. Dogs and get out the umbrella, Thank you. This system is going to yeah, that was Miami madness. We had a lot of fun making that one. Yes, uh, and I got to do most of my own stunts. Wow. You know, usually they don't want the act of taking those kinds of risks. Right, like, like Tom Cruise. I can store that in the hanging locker if you like. I got it. We're ready to go. Everything locked down? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so you've gotten your promotion to the international run, and I've gotten my promotion to mail. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's I'm a little excited. I mean, London, the first person in my family that's ever been out of Iowa. Really? Well, have fun. Cabin is secured, Captain. Generator? Check. Altimeter? Check. Fuel? Uh, 339,690 pounds. It was my father's wedding present to my mother. I know she would have wanted you to have him. Well, maybe one day we'll have a little girl to give him to. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard Voice Air International Flight 115, nonstop New York to London. As we prepare for takeoff, we'd like to show you some of the safety features of our 747. Please follow along on the safety card to be found in the back of the seat in front of you and direct your attention to the movie screen. Manchester scored again. Not so loud. They can hear you all the way to Piccadilly. Welcome aboard, and thank you for choosing Royce Air International. Now you got to open your... The demonstration is for your safety and comfort. Please draw your attention to the overhead monitors. A power plus 1600. Your father wasn't kidding. These things cost a fortune. Yeah, the salesman said it has two giga something. It's all charged and ready to go. Just like my husband. Um, excuse me, sir. You'll have to turn that off during takeoff and landing. Oh, yeah, I will. It's a wedding present for my bride. Congratulations. I'll see if I can scare up some champagne once we're airborne. for your autograph. Now, I'm not going to let anybody come up here and bother you, but I thought maybe later if I could round up a few napkins, maybe we'd sign a couple of them for the people. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Real nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.
Good evening, ma'am. I'm Detective Ned Strong. I'd like to know if this gentleman has boarded the plane yet. Yeah, 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 he's aboard, but uh, they're taking off. They're too late. There's nothing you can do? Uh, sir, you'll have to put that under the seat in front of you, or I can take it for you. No, I'll, uh, I'll just put it in front of me. Okay. Thank you. Roger, ground control. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain. The tower has just cleared us for takeoff. We've been advised that this thunderstorm may create some early turbulence, but we anticipate we'll be up and over it soon. Settle back. Thank you for flying Royce Air London. Let's get a shot of this Royce Air flight taking off. It's a good frame for the story. I'm on it. You've been glowing like a candle ever since we got on board. What'd you do, get a raise or something? We're gonna have a baby. Oh, are you kidding? No. When did you find out? This afternoon. Jesse, he doesn't even know yet. He's, he's laying over in London. Oh, God. I cannot wait to see his face when I tell him. We've been trying so long. Oh, well, I'm really happy for you. Heavy, your heading is 075. First flight 115. to be turned back to the airport immediately. Mr. Walker, please sit down and fasten your safety belt. Thank you, sir. I want to go back now. Look. It's a plane. What's that? Sounds like somebody's found flight 115. Daryl, let's switch to paint. If his transponder's blown, we'll find it with the radar. There's lots of little guys out there, sir. There. There it is. The computer generated signals not coming through. Why? Lightning strike, that could do it. But why can't we raise them? If it was lightning strike, maybe it took out the radar. Well, look at this. Flight 115's on a perfect heading. It's on an improved flight path. Only not for London. It's a shuttle route to Philadelphia. Something about a near mid-air collision. We have to check into this. I got some on this tape. You gotta see. 
you can see it in the viewer. It's cute. What is wrong? Are we supposed to just sit here while these people fly this airplane to the ground? Everybody be calm. The captain will make an announcement. Everything's all right, okay? Thank you. Captain Davidson. Captain Davidson, can you hear me? Captain Davidson? Ladies and gentlemen, we have just been hit by lightning, which is quite a common occurrence. However, it has resulted in a power relocation. This is routine procedure and explains why the lights went out momentarily. Thank you. Uh, you were having trouble raising the captain just now. I was wondering, is there anything I can do to help? No, thanks. Everything's fine. You can take your seat, though. Thank you. We still had no radio contact from 115. I've tried other bands. Uh, call Royce Air. Have them try the private line. Captain Davidson, can you hear me, sir? So, I don't know. They won't answer and the door won't open. Can I help? I just told you to go sit down. You're in violation of FAA regulations. So could you please go downstairs and find a seat? We've got to find a way to get in here. Because if these guys aren't answering, something is really seriously wrong. Well, then who's flying this plane? Ladies and gentlemen, you... It's just the landing gear, everybody. Everything's all right. Please just calm down and take your seats. It's the landing gear. <laughs> 47 is one of the safest aircrafts ever designed. It's practically indestructible. Still exactly on course for Philadelphia, except... Now its altitude is too high. Does that make any sense? Even navigation's down. Keep everybody away from 115. Why don't you fellas go back to your seats and relax? They're doing everything they can up here. We want to know who's in charge of this flight. We want some answers. Now. I'm in charge. What would you like to know? I don't want to talk to some stewardess. I want to talk to the captain. I'm going out. Hey, you heard what she said. She's in charge. Now just go back where you belong. Who are you? He's another passenger on the way back to his seat. Sir, if you don't mind, please try to keep your emotions under control. All right, everybody back to your seats, please. And fasten your safety belts. Go ahead. Everybody back. You haven't been able to raise the crew? No, cockpit door's jammed. Can't get in. Is there any other access? Yeah, there's an emergency door. Ugh. Watch that cable. Ugh. Yeah, hold that back out of the way. You should be directly behind the pilot now. <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha. I'm gonna need some kind of lever so I can pop the plate from this side. I'll find one. Is that a 
Charlene. Charlene, come on. What's the matter? It's happening again. Charlene, come on. Put yourself together. It's not happening again. It's not going to happen again. They said it would be okay. They promised me that it would be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Just stay here and, you know, pull yourself together. It's going to be fine. Charlene, I'm counting on you. <laughs> All right, that's it. Not perfect. <laughs> oh, God. Flight 115 almost caused a mid-air collision. At this time, we cannot confirm any reports about Flight 115, except to say that it's presently on an FAA-approved flight plan. Come on, Federal Gulf Air Traffic Control has no communication with the plane. We are currently tracking 115, and we will continue to do so. Is it true the plane is out of control? And if so, what are you going to do if it looks like it will crash in a populated area? Excuse me, please. Probably electrocuted. A direct hit from lightning. Would you please let us know what's going on up there? Yeah, give us a minute, Laurie, all right? Look, are there any are there any blankets up here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just outside the store. Yeah, we gotta get some. We gotta, we gotta wrap these bodies up and get them out of here. Help me with this door. Do you have any idea what's flying this airplane? Must be some, some kind of a computer autopilot. You know how to work it? No, but maybe Lori does, and she's a head flight attendant. We better get her up here. No. Help me with the door. Right. It's changing course again, sir. Heading northwest. Rochester. Syracuse. Why? We need to move the bodies out of the cockpit. And I think you should take the passengers from up here and move them downstairs. Get back downstairs and uh, just try to keep everybody calm, all right? Okay, there. Okay. Okay, come on. Do it. Lori, do you know anything about the plane's onboard computer? <sighs> no, I don't. Who are you? I'm Brett Young. Well, you know, right now, I should tell you to go back to your seat and stay there. But I'm not going to do that because I need some help. And we are in one hell of a situation. Well, we're still here. We're still flying. That's miracle enough. We just have to think. 
what can we do to help ourselves? Well, this, um, this plane's called a heavy flight. That's because it's got enough fuel to make a foreign turnaround. We can stay in the air for 16 hours. I mean, you know, it's, it's something. I hope it's enough. Has anybody here been divorced? <laughs> My wife and I, we went into uh, the attorneys. She had her list. I had my list, and the first thing on her list was my list. We interrupt this program for the following news bulletin. This is Dan Paulson in New York. It has been confirmed that shortly after takeoff, less than one hour ago, Royce Air International Flight 115 to London almost collided with a Southern Airways jet. Earlier this evening, I spoke to Royce Air Flight Attendant Charlene Davies, one of the people trapped on Flight 115. This is an incredible interview because of the special circumstances regarding this story. I wanted to be a flight attendant ever since I was a little girl. It's afforded me the opportunity to travel around the world, meet new people. I always knew there were risks involved, but you never really think about it. You have to move on. Can you move on and totally forget about it? Well, you have to. I mean, at some point you have to realize that every single flight is different. It's no different than being in a car accident. In fact, planes are safer than cars. What would you say to people at home who are about to get on a plane and have a fear of flying? Air travel is one of the safest forms of transportation. I understand Royce Air has assigned you to fly a 747. That's the same type of aircraft that you went down on. The 747 is one of the safest aircrafts ever designed. They're practically indestructible. I, uh, think she's going into labor. Okay, thanks. How are you doing? Okay, let's, let's get you laying down. Something with this wire. I knew a couple of those guys for 20 years. God, what a terrible way to go. You okay? Yeah. I will be. You already are. You're doing fine. Wonder if any of these manual switches still work. You know anything about them? No, I haven't got a clue. We need somebody with flight experience. Well, what about a passenger? Oh, well, it's not the kind of announcement you'd like to make over the PA system, but I'll think of something. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Do any of you have any flying experience? Or perhaps maybe you've got a few hours on a private plane, anything like that? Why? Is everyone up there like that guy with the burned arm? No, sir. Not at all. But we do have a problem. Then who's going to get us down? We are on automatic pilot. <laughs> Switching over to the board. And Mr. Green just got here. Who's Mr. Green? CEO of Green Industries. His company just bought Royce Air last month. Gentlemen, my name is Derek Green. Robert Burns. Mr. Burns, I'm afraid you're going to have to explain all this to me. I'm more used to steel mills. Well, I'll do what I can. Now, this clock we're watching here tells us how much flying time we have left. The computer monitors the plane's move, so we're always aware of fuel consumption. Let's change course again, sir. 115's new coordinate. Heading for Canada. 
Winnipeg. Catch you in Toronto, Senator. Yes, you can catch you for a Sir, if we have any chance of bringing this plane down safely, the first step is figuring out why these maneuvers keep happening. So we're just supposed to fly until we run out of gas and we crash? We're trying to override the autopilot. Mr. Walker, you're always coming up with last-second ideas to get out of situations. Do something. That young lady, that's only in the movies. This is real. And I'm trapped up here just like the rest of you. Look, you have to tell the rest of the passengers without scaring them. Now, everybody on this plane knows who you are. You're their hero. They'll listen. It would help if you made an announcement. I think he's right. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, now what happens? Two, three, testing. Hello. Some of you probably know me as Pillar Post. Action hero or Russell Dion. And I just want to tell you that no plane I'm on is gonna go down. <laughs> it wouldn't dare. <laughs> You're doing fine. They're listening. Come on, you can do it. Good. Look, we demand to know what is going on. Yeah. Why hasn't the pilot given us an explanation yet? Yeah, He's right. We need to know something. Right. My wife's scared to death. I don't want to stand here and listen to some half-wit matinee idol. I want to talk with the pilot. The pilot's dead. They're all dead. Are you satisfied? Ladies and gentlemen, please. Now listen to me, this is very important. Why didn't you tell us? Who's flying the plane? The plane's on autopilot. We have 13 hours of fuel left. All we have to do is stay calm and wait for ground control to tell us what to do. If we're going to solve our problem, we have to stay calm and work together. Now we need to talk to anybody on board who has either pilot or computer training. Dump. officials are remaining understandably cautious. However, that 747 bound for London with almost 400 passengers aboard appears to have been struck by lightning. Here is that incredible shot captured earlier this evening. Smoke! You had a computer. Are you computer savvy? A little. You know more than that, Carl. He's really good with them. He can help. Why do you need help with the computer? Come on, I'll show you. you need it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, this is, uh, this is the autopilot computer. Now, I'm wondering if there's any way we can at least gain minimum control back. We might be able to find a way of connecting my Power Plus into the hard drive. Maybe we can bypass the system. Now, once when these, these wires sparked, the plane reacted.
three seconds more and they'll crash. Jeez, they're going down so fast. Joni's first flight by herself. Her grandmother was going to meet her in London. I can't believe she... I let her get on that airplane all alone. She's 10 years old. She's, She's probably terrified to death. Why is your daughter's mother taking this? <laughs> her mother was killed in a car accident last summer. Please, God, don't take my baby. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I... Bring me up to date on what you got, Rob. I know they're heading north. Oh, Mr. Green, this is uh, Donna Preston from FAA. Donna, this is uh, Roy's CEO, Derek Green. Now, the Southern pilot reported all lights, interior and exterior, were out. Mm. Just after the miss, the passenger section came back on. The cockpit was still dark. If it was lightning, even two bolts, the airframe should take that. But what if the bolts were on opposite charges? An implosion could burn out the electronics, even kill the crew. And how would it keep flying? Well, the 747 has a flight management computer. It's a combination of the inertial guidance and instrument landing systems. You can actually punch your destination into it, and it'll deliver you, point and click. Now, if that survives, they have a chance. The only problem... What? 115's been flying at random. It keeps rerouting itself. On a course now for Winnipeg, but that could change. It could hit anywhere. Or go down anywhere. Lori found somebody that might be able to hook us up. Uh, sorry, what's your name again? Joel. That's the problem. We have to somehow connect the laptop into this. Is that the primary cable? What am I asking you for? You don't know. We have to access the main computer and bypass that wire. That's what caused the last dive. Now, can you do it? Can I do it? I don't expect you carbon-based humans to understand this, but if it's got silicon guts, Joel baby here is a heart surgeon. This isn't a joke. Let me get my toolbox. Toolbox? You think you can do it? These computer geeks live on a different planet. But he's all we got. The full 747. Thousands of pounds of fuel. Crashing into the heart of downtown Chicago. What would be your best guess of a body count? Gentlemen, like it or not, this flight is an armed bomb waiting to fall. I'm calling Air Force Tactical Command, just in case. Wait a minute. You're not talking about shooting them down, are you? It's not my call, Mr. Green. But I would be negligent if I didn't at least have the Air Force in a position to act. You sure are taking all of this well. Nothing else to do. Getting excited isn't going to change reality. Yeah, well, I guess that's why I hired you. You can handle pressure well. 
You hired me because I don't have a life. I was free to travel anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. I don't even have a cat that'll miss me if I don't come home from this trip. I never even thought of asking you about your personal life. Yeah, well... Eight hit movies in a row will do that to a person. Gates, Wozniak, and Dreesen. All these audio-visual dweebs who couldn't get a date in high school because their brains all got in the way. Reading Homer at six, Heisenberg at ten. So bored in high school, they... I got it. Now what do we do? Oh, no. Uh, this was it. I, I just came to hook you up. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Look, I got it for you. Now you do it. I can't. Tom, something really amazing just happened right here. I came by to see Sean Lewis, whose wife Beth is on flight 115. Believe it or not, some three hours into the flight, he didn't even know about it. Here he is. Mr. Lewis, Mr. Lewis, can you wait just a second? What's going on? Look, I don't want to talk right now. Look, can, is there anything you want to say to the airline? I want to know what's going on. I want to know why the airline hasn't tried to contact me yet. Is there anything you want to try to say to the airline? My wife is seven months pregnant. She didn't have to go over there. Her mother fell and broke her hip. This didn't have to happen to her, okay? Didn't. storage compartment to get more blankets and, and I found Charlene, the new girl, just standing there frozen. Yeah. I, I couldn't get a word out of her. She was in that southeast air flight that crashed on the runway in Miami about a oh year ago. God. Well, I thought she was all right, but um, I'll go up and check. Okay. Stay here. All right. Do you want some more water? Somebody! Hello? Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Charlene, I'm stuck. Hey! Hey! I smell smoke. Oh, yeah, stuck down here. There's a fire! There's a fire! Lori, there's a there's a fire in the downstairs galley. What else? You got it? I need a witch. Oh, here. Look, use that shoe. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull from this end. Get me a towel and soak it in water. Excuse me. Right on three. One, two, three. Hold my legs.
aboard, and thank you for choosing Royce Air International. The following demonstration is for your safety and comfort. Please draw your attention to the overhead monitors, where we will demonstrate our important safety features on board this aircraft. Please take time to read the safety features card, which you will off? find in the seat Maybe pocket I facing can? you. The details are emergency exits, their locations, and operations. Be careful. There are... It's now time for one of the most exciting moments of our flight. If you can get... Despite words of official optimism, the mood here at air traffic control is growing increasingly grim as experts analyze the fate of Flight 115. Okay, it it's Leave Federal it Aeronautics it Administration it Representative Donna Preston. Ms. Preston, is it not true that you're helpless to save Flight 115? No, that's not true. If it crashes, will not everybody on board die as well as thousands on land? No, we would exercise a control before that would happen. And what do you mean by that? I mean that to protect the thousands of civilians on the ground, we might have to control the aircraft ourselves. What? What's she talking about? They're going to shoot us down. They're not going to shoot us down. They're going to help us get down. That's not the same. It's another amazing twist unfolding on the story of Flight 115, now bound for an unknown destination. I'm standing here with New York City Police Detective Ned Strong, who suspects that one of the passengers on the plane Maybe a wanted fugitive. Is there anything you can tell us about this detective? Well, we have reason to believe that a man involved in corporate espionage with the Defense Department has gotten on the plane in the hope of getting out of the country. Have you changed your plans on how you may try to apprehend him? Well, we could have had an agent stationed before customs at the gate at London's Heathrow Airport. But now with the plane flying out of control, we don't know if and when it's going to land. All we can do is, like the families, sit around and wait. <laughs> Okay, we're hooked up. Now, my guess is that if I can find a command bar and click on it, I might be able to affect the autopilot computer. I don't know, I mean, what if I send us into another barrel roll? Well, one thing we know for sure, we don't want to touch that wire again. Okay, well, that sounds like a short, like a new entry into the system. All I need to do is bypass that. Look, just keep trying. We gotta find a way to land this plane. All right, well, here goes nothing. My case, my briefcase. The black one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it slid down the aisle, so I put it up number three. That the one? Yeah. Medical experts are concerned for the safety of passengers aboard Royce Air Flight 115. With NTSB authorities confirming that lightning has all but destroyed the electrical system on the aircraft, it is conceivable that the onboard pressurization may have been affected to the point of putting these passengers at extreme risk. Now, we need someone who knows the system. All the service tech. The air phones. It's not. The earphones are down. What about a cell phone? I mean, there are a lot of businessmen on this flight. Somebody's got to be carrying one. Well, we canvassed the passengers already. Nobody's got one. They know there's a different system in Europe. Well, I have one. But it's in my luggage. Miss, what's happening? See, that thing's not going anywhere. Well, I'm going to go down. Okay, I'll go with you. Look, I think it'd be better Look, I'm if I... smaller than you are. I can probably move around easier down there. And besides that, neither one of us knows where your bag is. So we're both equally clueless. Let me just go with you. Oh. Not a lot of air down here. Okay. 
There are four cargo halls. The first one, we might as well start here. Down this way. Two thousand feet, moving into the stratosphere. At the rate they're going, they'll be out of cap and oxygen in a couple of minutes. If their backup oxygen doesn't work, we'll have a plane with four hundred dead people heading for a crash. The Air Force will have no alternative.
I got a blurry command screen. I can't read the words, but I can highlight them. Can you click on it? Now we're still going up. Try again. Hit the bar beneath it. Somebody absolutely fresh. I'm really okay, sir. I'd rather see it through. Anything new? Descending to 36,000 and holding. And just changed course. What's its current heading? Chicago. It's not good news. I just got off the phone with Washington. They're tracking it with the military. If it approaches a heavily populated area, they might very well take it down. sit with you. It's really scary back there. You've really been helping out a lot. The other passengers were talking about you. One of them said that you finally realized that you were on the court alone. You know, I think they're right. There you go. I can't get anything on this, just static. Oh. Oh. I'm not just going to sit here. We blast out of the sky for our own Air Force. We need to take control of the situation before these incompetents get us killed. So, why are you going to London? Actually, I'm... Uh, I'm running from the police. I jump bail. Oh, what does that mean? Are you some kind of criminal? Well, that depends on how you look at it. I work for a... I worked for a company that designs laser communication devices. And I found out they were falsifying reports, which was going to mean a lot of dead Marines. So I blew the whistle. They were going to lose their Pentagon contracts. Yeah, but you said the police were after. The company lied to the feds. They turned it all around. They said that... They said that I stole classified documents. All of a sudden, I was the criminal. So why are you running away to London? Well, I have papers that I think could clear me. And I have a friend who's going to help me sort them out. I'm just going to go down for a minute and check on my wife. We just got married yesterday. Or was it the day before? Can't remember. We were going to London on our honeymoon. Are either of you two married? <laughs> was a long time ago. Yeah, once a long time ago. 
And I promise you, you're not going to like the music. We've got to do something. They're going to shoot us down. They are not going to shoot us down. And I think you should listen to him and get back to your seats, because what you are doing now is a felony. And when we do get down and everyone else gets to go home to their families, you, sir, will go to jail. Flying out of control toward Chicago with just over half its high octane fuel left. We now have film footage of a test done by the FAA showing what happens when one of these big planes hits with that much fuel on board. Now, another TV3 perspective on this unfolding story. Just like in the movies, sometimes the adversity of disasters like this make real life heroes out of everyday people. And we have a woman with us today, Jennifer Pickett, who's the mother of the head flight attendant on flight 115. Jennifer, I know this is incredibly difficult for you. What must be going through your mind right now? I'm scared to death. Where is the only family I have left? And I can't find out anything except what's on that television, and they don't know anything. Laurie is all I have. I know how tough this must be again for you, and if you can just bear with me. You know Laurie better than anybody else. What can you tell the families of the other passengers, knowing her as well as you do, that she might be doing to try to save and help those other passengers. Laurie's been flying for 20 years. And I, I, know, I know this is gonna be hard to believe, but she was gonna quit after this. This is gonna be her. Farmingdale. It's an airport outside Chicago. I guess the autopilot's taking us in. Then we may make it. Shouldn't that say O'Hare? Or, or what's the other one? Midway? What kind of airport is this Farmingdale? It's small. It's too small to land this airplane. I'll get the passengers ready for a crash landing. Okay, let's go by the numbers. Number one, secure your cabins, belts, seats, then assess the outside condition. You sure you're up for this? I need to be. I'm the only one who's actually ever been in a crash. Now, there must be some kind of signal bringing this in. I can't stop it. So we've gotten confirmation. It's going in at Farmingdale. Put me through to Farmingdale Airport. Uh, do whatever you have to, it's an emergency. But if it's an airport and they're landing... Sir, this runway is less than half a mile long. Only the lightest and smallest planes can land here. The ILS is honed in and can't tell the difference between Farmingdale and a major airport. What's the area like? Semi-urban. Shopping centers and schools just beyond the runway. It might get a little shaky around here in a minute, but I just want to let you know I'm going to get you out. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to prepare for an emergency evacuation of the plane immediately after landing. Bring your seatbacks upright and make sure you are buckled in securely. Then I want you to remove your eyeglasses. Lean forward, cover your faces, and remember to do exactly as your flight attendants tell you to do. As Thank you. I'll be right back. We can't let this happen. Donna, if you bring this plane down now, there's no telling where the wreckage will hit. As it is, 115 will collapse the runway and crash the moment it hits. It won't get more than 50 yards. 
No, we have to contact the man on duty. He has to turn off that Omni. Answer it, damn it, answer it. been a farm you Everybody okay downstairs? Yeah, they're all okay. I mean, they're disappointed that we didn't land. I didn't tell them what would have happened if we did. They're all in shock. The problem is their computer could bring it down anywhere. And that makes any airfield a dangerous target. Isn't it possible a system could bring them down safely without a crash? Possibly, but there's still a significant amount of fuel left. And we don't know the extent of the damage done to the flight control computer. If they were on a final approach to a major airport and the system malfunctioned, the loss of life on the ground would be tremendous. So you really think they're going to shoot them down? If they could make it to the west coast, they'd have burned off most of their fuel. Maybe they'd have a chance. But if they start an approach to an airport before that, I don't see as how there'd be a choice. We have just learned that flight 115 appears to be headed west. Airport officials in New York have suddenly gone silent as to what their current plans are. We're trying to get information as to whether this indicates some dire new development. Now over to one of TV3's exclusive interviews. Unfortunately, when there are tragedies like this, there are always a bevy of human relations stories that just tear your heart out. And I think we have one right here. We have the Porters, Michael, Jessica, and their daughter, Renee. And their other daughter, Lydia, just got married a couple of days ago. We're going to start with you, Jessica. When did Lydia and Carl first meet? Oh, they've been together since college. Well, they broke up for a little while, but then they got back together and decided to get married. Oh, there's so much in love. This is such a heartache. Purchase some coffee. Thanks. Any idea where we are? Well, we're headed west as far as I can tell. It's a lot of wide open space down there. Kansas, eastern Colorado. I wouldn't be far off. You spend a lot of time in London? Yeah, long layovers. What do you do when you're there? <laughs> Mostly sleep. You know, I can't believe my biggest worry yesterday was how to call the airline and tell them that I was going to quit. Quit? Why? Well, I just uh, didn't feel like I was doing anything that mattered anymore. Well, you can throw that theory out the window now. It's out. <laughs> if we get through this, when we get through this, I was wondering if you... You might want to meet me over there. Oh, 
was a little, um, a little pub on Barclay Square, beyond DeLucas. Um, I like it. Just know I'll be there at noon, first day of every month. Hey. So, any new ideas on how we're gonna land this thing? Well, we just gotta stay high enough so we don't pick up any landing signals from another small airport. Right now, we got about three hours worth of fuel. That should get us to the west coast. Yeah, or the desert. We could maybe land like the space shuttle. Or to a bigger airport. And if we, uh, we miss, we land in the ocean. Hey, check the screen. We got something there. I picked up another airport. It's taking us in. Denver? Oh, God. Denver's high enough. Of course it can reach us with its signal. Well, hey, that's great. We can land there. It's a big enough airport. No, no, that's not great. We can't. Why not? Because we've got three hours of fuel on board. If we crash there... So what are we gonna do? We just gotta stay in the air long enough to burn off the fuel. Come on, baby. Take us to the West Coast. Come on. Tell us something. Why don't they tell the family something? Gentlemen, my name is Derek Green. I'm the president of Royce Air International. I know how concerned you are about your family and your loved ones. Believe me, we are as well. And we're trying to get them down as quickly and as safely as we can. My daughter's on that plane. What are you doing to save her? Why won't you tell us something? Why don't you tell the families anything? Everything is being done that can be done. As you can imagine, the situation is very fluid at the moment. If we have any new information, I'll get it to you as quickly as we can. I ask you to just bear with us for a little while longer. Alert Seattle. Patching their approach control radar. I'm telling them there's less than 30 minutes of fuel time left. Tops. Wait. Picked up Vancouver. Actually, Tom, there's nothing new. Uh, wait a minute. I think we got something here. Uh, follow me, guys. I see the father of uh, Joni Baker, a 10-year-old girl who's on flight 115. Mr. Baker, Dan Paulson, uh, WED, uh, we're on live. I'm sorry to intrude, but I understand your daughter is on the flight. Is there anything you can say to us? Well, it's, uh, it's bad enough that, uh, that the plane is out of control. We don't even know where it's going to come down. But what really makes me mad is the Royce Aaron won't even talk to us, and we're family. I mean, they won't give us any information. That they won't tell us what's going on. You know? I mean, it's driving us nuts. We deserve better treatment than that. What's causing it? Just started to go nuts. Oh my 
God. Just learned from sources close to Royce Air. The Air Force may have received orders to shoot Flight 115 out of the sky for fear it will crash into a populated area. Ah! According to our source, the potentially tens of thousands of casualties on the ground. As Prophet advises the President to recommend taking extreme measures if necessary. Hey, check this out. Oh, no, not again. Go tell him in the, in the cockpit. Cargo hold it's out of control. The passengers in coach are rioting. We can't get them back in their seats. All right, do the best you can. I'll be there in just a minute. Go ahead. I need you. Could you help me? What's the matter with you people? You're acting like a pack of nervous rats. I saw that. I saw that movie. Train to kill. That's what he said to his man. Get back in your seats and buckle up. They're taking us in. Come on, move it, people. Move it. This is Kenneth Landau, BCNet. It has just been confirmed. The flight the world has been watching for the past 16 hours is now about to enter Canadian airspace. Having previously honed in on two U.S. airports in Illinois and Colorado, it now appears that Royce Air Flight 115 is headed here to the Vancouver International Airport. <laughs> We're either going to crash or burn, but we've got to do something. We got a shot. You better get him ready. Up. Put your oxygen masks on. Loosen your clothing. As soon as we land, bend forward. When we stop, the flight attendants will open that emergency exit door and we will deplane down the chute. Well, what if the flight attendant can't? Then I'll expect you to do that, sir, and help the other passengers out as well. They're getting them ready. Wait, bro. Oh, wait. That's a very small airport. Right outside Vancouver. Grab the wire. Grab it! Come on, change! Change! No. All right, listen. I want you to go downstairs and buckle in. Go ahead. No, no, no. What about you? I'll be fine. They need you downstairs. Go ahead. Do something. Call White Rock. I can't call White Rock. This is Derek Green. Give me the White Rock control tower. Nobody's there. White Rock is unmanned. We're going to attempt to get our camera down to the west end of the Vancouver runway for you here. You know, never before have I seen this airport in such a state of mass confusion. In the skies, all air traffic has been temporarily diverted. And here on the ground, rescue units, not only from the airport, but also from the city, are being assembled en masse. It's really unbelievable. This is Kenneth Landau, BC Net Worldwide. Almost too much.
minutes flying time left. Two minutes cruising time. Climb out of White Rock, wipes out most of that. With no gas, it won't be able to reverse engines and it won't be able to stop. The landing gear isn't coming down. is on the ground. little lady. I was just as scared as everybody else. You stay here. You stay here in case it explodes. If you go, I go. Till death do us part, remember? <coughs> Listen, there's a guy back here who won't get off the plane. <coughs> uh, I'll get him. All right. Come on, sir. We're the only two left on the plane. Let's get off. Passengers are clear. Oh. Yes. Good work. That was the first time since you've hired me that you've ever said thanks. Well, that can't be true. Boy, 
There's probably another force. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. <laughs> Great. And I'll make a deal with you. You help me to get back in the habit of saying please and thank you. And I'll, uh, I'll buy you a cat. Deal. You're the chief attendant. That's right. You got me notice that this man was on board. Yes. He was upstairs in business class when the lightning hit. There are four bodies up there in the pantry. I guess he's going to be one of them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.